Am I online and working? Any confirmation from chat that I'm up and running? It would be amazing, thank you. Okay, so my name is Alice O'Gorman. I'm from Ireland and I'm a coach here on CoachS. And today what I'm gonna be taking you through is how to evaluate a position. So I'm gonna to try to keep this lesson as interactive as possible. We're here live on YouTube and Twitch and I'll be checking the chat constantly. If someone wants to type in so I can make sure it's working, that'd be amazing. But yeah, so at any point when I'm going through this, I'll be asking questions. And if you guys have any questions to ask me, please do type them in and I will try to get to them all. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait to see if I can see a message in chat. I think I have a slight delay. Oh, there, someone says hi. Oh, hi, thank you so much for typing in. It's all working now. So today what I'm gonna talk about is how to evaluate a position. And I got to choose the topic. So why I wanted to talk about this is I find when I'm teaching a lot of students and I give them a position, they just sort of jump into mood straight away. And I've always found you can't just find a move in the position unless you know what's going on, unless you've evaluated it first. Oh, hello there from India. Hi. Hi, Rahul. So what I'm gonna go through is how to actually make a good evaluation. And then once you've made this evaluation, you can make a plan much easier. We're also gonna talk about evaluating a position, deciding whether it's good or bad, so when we're um, calculating a line out, decide whether to go for it. What's my feeder rating? My feeder rating is around 1900, I think. Okay, so before we get started, I've kind of explained why I want to do this. It's because I think it's something a lot of students don't do. They just sort of go straight to calculation. But how are we gonna do this? So I like to make it as simple as possible because there are so many things you can look for in a chess position. But how to evaluate it really easily is the first thing you need to do is count material, because if someone's up a huge amount of material or down a huge amount of material, that's gonna change the evaluation. But after that, you just need to check for threats because if the position your queen is hanging or there's something tactical going on, that is off also gonna change the evaluation. But after that, it gets a bit trickier because I think a lot of players automatically count material, check for threats, but what do you look at next? Well, I break the whole position down into king safety, piece activity and pawn structure. And within, within these three topics, all the other things kind of, they kind of fall underneath under one of them. So I'm not gonna be like putting a whole special thing out for open files or weak squares, because these are things you need to look at. But if you look at king safety, piece activity and pawn structure, you should find them all. Oh, hello there everyone and good evening. So yeah, these are the things that I really suggest we look at. And I'm gonna start with a position to show you how to do it. So we're gonna to go to this position here. And yeah, if people in chat wanna kind of give their evaluations as well, that would be great. Cause we wanna keep this really interactive because I think the more active a lesson is, the more likely you are to learn. If I just sit here talking, um, I don't know, what's the best opening for beginners? Oh, that's not for me to say. I think you have to look at the opening yourself and decide what you want to play. Uh, hello everyone. So we're gonna go through this position. And I said, the first thing we need to do is count material. So if you count material here, it, it's level. So that's kind of how you start. And then you need to look for any obvious threats, but no queens are hanging, no rooks are on. Yeah, so someone said there, they'd much rather be white, beautiful bishops, tons of space, and black queen is poorly placed. So you've kind of got all the topics there, but I want to work through this methodically because this is just an example to show you how to evaluate something. So the first thing I said to look at is king safety. Because obviously if you get checkmated or you manage to checkmate them, that's gonna end the game. So it's the most important thing to look at first. And let's look at the king. So can anyone in chat say which king here is better or which king is weaker? So who do we think has to worry about their king more? So I would say here definitely black's king and like in white's king, the structure is the same. And I know black has an extra piece around their king, but I want to look at these squares. Okay, so yeah, everyone again is looking at ideas that I don't want to get for moves. I think we need to evaluate it first. 
Um, so we need to look at these squares and these are what are called weak dark squares. And so weak dark squares are kind of a term a lot of people throw around but I really wanted to explain to you guys. So these are squares around the king that are undefended um, by black. Black has no pawns defending them and they, has no, and they have no bishop that can come back to g7 to get on them. So yeah, the black king is much weaker because of these squares. So that's the first thing on king safety. Then we need to look at peace activity. And a lot of people pointed out here that, you know, this bishop is way better than the knight and this queen is way better. But I want to ask you about the rooks because we have to evaluate the whole position. So whose rooks do we think are better? Someone's saying white's rooks are better? So yeah, the difference between the rooks is a lot less minimal than the other pieces, but it's something I want to look at. Because here the rooks are connected, which is much better, but also this rook is tied down. So while the rooks, neither of them are very active at the moment, yeah, so they're equally valuable at the moment, you're right, but we need to note that white has more potential with their rooks because this rook on a8 is tied down to a7. Okay, so now the final thing I want to look at is pawn structure before we go about making our plan. So can anyone here tell me anything about the pawn structure? Yeah, black can't move their queen. Okay, so that's another thing. So these, as we said, this queen is much more active. Yeah, so a7 is being attacked. This makes this rook quite weak and tied down. So if we look at this pawn structure, these pawns are both isolated over here. So you could say they're potentially. So as they have more space, they have more room to move their pieces. Like if you think white has all the way up to a6 and all the way over here. But when you have more space, how can you actually use this in your games? You know, you might say, oh, I have more space, so I'm better. But what does that really mean and how do you how do you do it? So how do you take advantage of having more space? Does anyone know? Well, you say the white pawns are connected, but I'd say the black pawns are equally connected. So the pawn structure is the same, except for white having more space. So does what do people know about space? Yeah, the F pawn is restricting the knight. So exactly when um Having more space means their pieces are more restricted. So as you can see, this knight is really cramped in and the pieces are really inactive because they have less space. Exactly, so when we talked about it earlier saying white's pieces are more active, the reason probably is, is these pieces have more space. So I wanna ask you, if you have more space, do you want to trade pieces or do you not want to trade? This is the big question. So say you're white, it doesn't hugely apply in this position because again, this position is just to show you concepts of how to evaluate. But do you think you would want to trade pieces or not if you have more space? Yeah, someone said that you do not want, well done. And the reason is, let's imagine black hat to like put three more minor pieces on the board. We can barely choose any good squares for them. They'd be sitting all on top of each other, yeah. But if white hat to have three more minor pieces, you could literally put them anywhere and they still be really active. So that's the really big thing about space. If you think about it, you've got a small area, the more cramped you are, the less it makes your pieces even less active and even worse. But if you've more space, yeah, more space, you can trade pieces. You don't want to trade pieces because your pieces are good. Okay, so now we've kind of gone over this whole position. We looked at material, we looked at threats and we looked, and then we looked at the king safety. We decided, Black's king is worse. And we decided that um, white's pieces were more active and white was better because they had more space. So now it's time to make a plan. Someone said there the knight on e4 would be a monster. So we're gonna, yeah, it would be, but this knight doesn't have time to make its way over here. That is gonna be too slow. But you're right, this is a really strong outpost for it. And black would like to trade, but it's white's go. And people already suggested the best plan. So I'm just gonna show you that. And when we did our evaluation, the first thing we noted was pawn structure, not pawn structure, king safety. Definitely not pawn structure. King safety is the most important. Um, sorry, someone else there, how do you convert space to win? Well, what I was saying is you kind of, if you keep their pieces on the board, you cramp them more and more and their pieces become less active. And when you're, and we can see here, your pieces are more active and more active pieces 
will create a win. I'm reading both chats. I'm reading YouTube and Twitch at the same time. So, so Queen C3, someone suggested there. Um, is this actually black to move? It's not. Um, someone suggested Queen C3. Queen C3 isn't the best move, but Bishop B2 is. So why is Bishop B2 the best move? Yeah, someone's saying Queen D4 is a really strong idea. How will Black defend against this? Rook B1. So how is, at the moment we're just focusing on the idea of Queen B3 followed by trying to get the Queen to D4. Threatening mate on g7 because we notice these weeks, these dark squares are really weak. How does black defend? Okay, they can't. They can't defend properly, but there's a few tries. So the first one we have to look at is knight h6. And after queen d4, the idea is rook f7. But what's the mate? I'm sure people in chat can see this. Anyone see the mate here? I'm just going to put it in. I think there's a lag on chat. I'm sure everyone can see this. Yeah, someone said knight to h6, rook to f7. It's a good plan, but it doesn't work because these dark squares are so weak. So when you protect one, you lose the other. And that's the thing about weak dark squares. Okay, so rookie 8, rookie 5, sacrificing the rook. Yes, this is an idea, but when your opponent has to sacrifice a rook, we're going to end our evaluation there. So we're going to say, when we're to evaluate this position, we're saying, well, now we're up a rook. Yeah, so lots of people are spotting h8 there. Well done. So this is the winning plan. They can try to do a couple of things. And do. So yeah, maybe bishop c3 is better to stop the exchange sacrifice, but it's all winning. But I want to focus on not this mating attack, but just activating our rooks. So we've got two rooks that need to be activated. And now you have to make a big decision. Oh, it's buffering. Is everything okay now? Is... Well, I hope it's all working. Okay, so this is a common thing you have to decide in chess. You have to decide which rook to activate. Oh, it's lagging. I'll check my OBS. Okay, it seems to be back working, is it? Okay, it's back now. Okay, so which rook are we going to activate here? The F rook or the A rook and which file? Because this is a big decision you have to make. And I know we have a mating attack, but we're just going to we're just going to focus on the idea of activating the rooks. My video is buffering often. Oh, I'm so sorry. My Wi-Fi should be good. OK, well, if it's OK now, I'm not. You might have seen from some of my streams before. Technology is not my strong point at all. So I'm just glad it's working. OK, no, I read I read all the chats. I'll be reading YouTube and Twitch. But now the big question is, are we, how are we activating our rooks and where are we activating them to? If we don't have this mating attack, we then move on to peace activity and the rooks aren't active. So someone says the F rook. So where are we activating this F rook? Is it E1 or B1? What do we all think? E1 or B1 for the rook? Okay, so on says the E file, so I'm going to go through this. So when we have to activate a rook, we have to think about a few things. What's the purpose of activating the rook? Well, the purpose of activating the rook is to get an open file, and we want to control that file entirely. But we can see after rook E1, they just play rook E8, we share the file, and we can't get to the seventh rank or do anything with it. So actually, if we play rook E1, you know, our rooks are again equal. Let's compare this to rook B1, and we notice in our evaluation that this A rook was the worst rook because it was tied down to the pawn. So here you can see they can't they can't challenge you because you just take the A pawn because this rook is tied down, which means in rook B1 you actually get the file, when rook E1 you just share it. So let's say they make an activating move now. How do we keep going with this plan to activate the B rook? Where does it belong? Any squares, where do we want to go to?
Yeah, so the A rook to the B, yeah, so the A rook to the B file, then the F rook to the E file, yes, but at the moment we've got to the B file first and we want to make use of it fully. So you get to the B file because you want to get to B7. So that's another thing you have to compare when you're evaluating B7 or E7. B7 is protected, so you can actually get to the seventh rank with your rook, rather on the E file you just share it and you have no way to invade. And rooks are so good on the seventh rank, and this basically is because the weakest pawns are here. Yeah, someone's, yeah, rook b1 is better, rook e1 could be equal. The position is still good for white, but rook b1 is the best way to play because you can actually get to b7. You can get to the seventh rank where you um, attack all the weak pawns. Okay, so that's this position kind of done. And I'm going to recap what we did there. And what we looked at is we looked at the king's safety first. Notice they were weak along the dark squares, so we got on them and we made it them. And then after that, we looked at activity and realized the rooks weren't active, so found our best way to activate the pieces. So does anyone have any questions from that position? Because I've got some more ones we're gonna analyze, we're gonna evaluate and then come up with plans for the next. Okay, I'm gonna move on to this next position now. Okay. So we're going to have a look at this again. So the first thing we're going to do, like before, is we're going to count pieces. So who's up? Let's count here. So if you count the, they both have a queen, two rooks, a minor piece, but black we can see is up a pawn. So that's the first thing we need to look at. Okay, and after we look at, um, after we look at, at um, who's up pieces, we need to look at any direct threats. So the um, this isn't really a threat because it's defended. There's potentially taking here, which is something on, but it's defended. And okay, you have to look at queen takes c2 and queen takes e5, as these are both things that could be taken. And they're kind of things to keep on your radar. But now let's look at king safety because we've, we've kind of assessed if there are any major threats. No queens are hanging, no rooks are hanging, there's just a few pawns that you can take. But we're going to analyze the position first. Okay, everyone's saying free pawn, but don't just jump to the free pawn. We need to evaluate the position fully before we do that. Before we take here, if we do take here. So let's talk about king safety. So the kings are on opposite sides of the board. Yeah, someone said queen takes... Um, and it's on the opposite side of the board is going to be an aggressive game and it's an aggressive game because now you can throw your pawns at it you can put the rooks against the king and attack really easily because you're not exposing your own king doing that yes yeah, so if someone said there white's king is safer so why is white's king safer well they're safer because black is missing this a7 pawn so when you look at king safety you should be saying oh no they don't have an a7 pawn and that is really not good you really want three pawns in front of your king to keep it safe. And right now, there's this open a file. So that's what you kind of note about king safety. This game is opposite side castling. It could be quite aggressive. Okay. So as people are saying, why not taking the bishop? Well, we're going to evaluate it first, get the whole, um, understand the position, and then, and then decide whether to take the bishop or not. So now let's look at peace activity. I think we need to stop suggesting moves and just have a think about the position. Whose pieces are more active? Well, this is a tricky question and it's not actually that obvious. So this rook on d1 is really good. But this queen is pretty good, so both pieces are quite active. So in terms of activity, it's quite equal. Yes, yeah, so people are saying white and black. It's actually hard to tell. The white rook is better, but this queen might be slightly better. It's quite equal in terms of activity. So at the moment, the only big imbalance is king safety. The knight is really good here. You have to agree. Okay, so now let's look at pawn structure. Black's up a pawn, but what do we think about their pawn structure? Do people like these two double pawns, or is this a weakness? Yeah, someone said their white queen is good too. Most pieces in general in this position are pretty good. I know the rook on h8 looks like it hasn't been moved, but if you think the plan is going to be attack white's king, the rook here is well placed. So it's all fine.
Okay, so these pawns are really weak. So this is what we were saying, like if these pawns are really weak, is there any point in taking straight away? Yeah, they're doubled and isolated, so it's not a priority to take because they're going to drop off at one stage. So okay, now we've kind of evaluated the position. We've looked at king safety is really weak. The king is really weak along the e-file. This rook is potentially the best piece. And these pawns are hard to protect, so maybe it's not an... Um, maybe we don't need to immediately take these pawns because we can do it later. Instead, we should be focusing on attacking this weak king. So I think a lot of people said it. We want to get on this A file, because if we get along this A file, we're going to win and give for checkmate. So how do we get along this A file? Well, the move we'd love to play, oh, it has queen A5 in. I hope it will let me, it's not letting me make another move. Not queen E5. Queen A3. This chest 24 is... I'm sorry, what are you teaching? Queen a3, we want to play, but they can take here. So what we have to do instead, yeah, we have to remove the knight, takes, and now queen a3. So queen a3 hits the rook, and is going to also hit on a8, checkmate. So if you go through evaluating the position, you realize the king is weak, you want to attack on the a file, and to do that you have to remove the bishop, and here we actually get a fork between the queen, between a8, and the rook. Okay, someone says, but queen a6. Yeah, but this rook, it hangs. So that's that position, and I know you can probably figure that out quicker, but if you go through your evaluation, you will get there. So uh, yeah, so someone said, it's avoiding tunnel vision, it's taking in the whole position. It's going slowly and getting there, and it's not just taking the pawn straight away. Because this pawn is weak, it's not that important. Instead, we need to actually look, realize they're weak along the A file, and take. Though it could be a better minor piece, but here, it's if you win a whole rook, it's worth it. Okay, so we're going to move on to another position now, because this is using we're going to use evaluation a bit differently. Last go, we were using evaluation. I'm going to flip the board because we're black here. We were using evaluation to come up with a plan. And this time, we're going to calculate and evaluate the end of a line to see if it's any good or not. OK. So let's start by taking in this whole position again, because you're seeing a new position. You need to get a feel for it. So let's look at king safety. Well, firstly, sorry, material. Always check material. Who's up here? So we can see that black is up a pawn. But are there any direct threats? Yes, there is taking. This is something you need to worry about. Um, and also, you lose with an extra rook. Well, I'm, I'm, sure you'll, I'm sure with an extra rook, you'll manage to win some games. An extra rook can't harm you. So how would you go about evaluating this position? There's a piece on. This position looks really bad for black, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks pretty bad, all right. So now you have to start with king safety. Whose king do you think might be safer here? Well, I think we can say that white's king looks a lot safer than black's. This queen is coming into the game. This rook is staring down here. The bishop, the pawns. It looks horrible for black. So king safety, we can definitely say suits white. And black here really needs to be worried about it. OK, and now we go on to peace activity. What do we think about peace activity? Well, this rook looking down here is really active, this bishop is active, and this queen is active, all looking at the king, potentially. Um, it's black to move here. If it was white to move, sorry, they would just they would just take the pawn. Whoever's side we're going to be looking at, so the fact we're looking at it from black's position, mean it's black's to go. And in terms of peace activity, these rooks on c8 and b8 could be good, but they're looking at the wrong side of the board. You know, they're looking at the queen side where black's play is. Black's play would be pushing b4, creating a pass pawn. But at the moment, that can happen because you have to worry about the king safety. Black is lost. This is unplayable. Well, we're going we're gonna to figure this out for black. OK, so their king is in a bit of a state. Their pieces are on the wrong side of their board. But let's talk about their pawn structure. 
What can we say about black's pawn structure here? Is it better than white's? What was white's last move? White's last move was e5, e5 to attack the knight. So whose pawn structure do we think is better? Well, I'd say black's pawn structure is much better. Okay, because if we look, these pawns are potentially going to create a path pawn pretty quickly. This e pawn, these, these e pawns are doubled and weak. This c pawn is a weakness. It's all isolated. So you play knight h5. Moves like knight h5 are all possible, but what you have to calculate, well, knight d7 or knight h5, they're all the same, but what you really have to calculate is queen takes. Why is it not making? Yeah. Because if you play knight d7, this position is actually, knight d7 is playable, but they're going to have a big attack. So can anyone see the issue with queen takes? So it's bishop here. Okay. So bishop g3 happens, and then what can we think the next move is? Queen e5. Okay. Queen takes. Queen takes. And this is kind of, you maybe throw in this trade, and this is where you have to evaluate the position again at the end of this line. Yeah, someone said 97 is passive, you have to calculate this. So now let's evaluate this position. So let's start by um, counting material. So who's up on material here? So material is actually equal when you look at it. So even though you felt like you sacrificed an exchange, you got a pawn for it, and you were already up a pawn. So here, um, material is equal. There is a knight and two pawns for a rook. Now white isn't just up in exchange, they have, black has two pawns for it. Okay, so now let's look, no direct threats really, except for the c pawn which they have to deal with, which we'll keep in mind. And now we have to look at king safety. So if we compare king safety in this position to the previous position, black has definitely improved. Their king is so much safer and their king is fine. Someone said they take black here. Well, before we know who we take, we have to work through it. So they've improved their king safety, the material's equal. And now let's look at piece activity. Whose pieces are more active here? Um, I'd say the pieces there, all pieces are fairly active, but if white wants to keep this pawn, they're gonna have to play. Why can I not make these moves? going to have to play rook here to keep this pawn and now they've got this really active knight and this tied down rook and black is going to push their queenside pawns interestingly after rook c1 if you calculate it does b4 work can anyone see why this works after takes and takes can white take here sorry not there can white take yeah it drops an exchange so black's knight is actually the Pretty much the best piece on the board. It's on an outpost, it's really active. And then we look at pawn structure. So we've looked at king safety, piece activity, and now pawn structure. So if we go back to pawn structure before, we said white's pawn structure was really bad, and it's still really bad. This e3 pawn is, is isolated, so is this c3 pawn, so is this a5 pawn, and now the pawns are gonna run. There's no way to protect this pawn because you just push. Um, and if you try to protect it this way, you also just push and you create some past pawns. So actually, if you take a full evaluation of this position and realize this is actually winning for black. This position is completely winning. Because they have a better piece, they have a better pawn structure, and they are no longer in trouble with their king. And if we compare that to a few moves ago, where they were up a pawn only, but their king was in big trouble and all white's pieces were active. 
we can see how this exchange stack is good. So does everyone understand now how you might evaluate an exchange sacrifice in terms of in terms of the fact it protects your king, you get an active piece and you get better pawn structure. So that is how to evaluate the end of a line and decide whether to play it. Okay, we're gonna move on to a different position now. I'm gonna go on to something similar, so it's going to be another end game. Okay, brilliant, I'm glad that makes sense. Now this we're gonna flip the board and go for white here, so it's white to move. But again, before we make moves, we're gonna just evaluate and take in the position. So in end games, it's a little different. Oh, someone said white doesn't have to play um, taking bishop g3 and taking the exchange, but if they don't take the exchange, they're down two pawns and their attack is gone. So they really do. And in the game they did, and that's how it ended. And um, black just went on to easily enough convert that ending. But let's look at this one. So in terms of end games, you evaluate slightly differently because now you don't look at king safety because the king actually becomes a piece in an end game. So you have to look at king activity as well. I know, end games. And this isn't one you can calculate the whole way out. You actually just have to evaluate it and come up with the right move. So yeah, same color bishops is something to note. It's much more likely to be a win for one side because sacrificing the bishop you can't really hold down the square and maybe sacrifice the bishop because they can always trade bishops here. So yeah, and black has isolated pawns. So the thing you have to look at in endgames is, um, is again, who's got more material to start with. Um, you need, so it's material, it's activity and it's structure. Isn't it? Yeah, so evaluating will take a lot of time. And at the end of this lesson, I'm gonna go through some practical tips about when to evaluate because you can't evaluate every move. Get your pawns on dark squares. You see, that's just a rule. And actually in this position, you don't want your pawns on dark squares. And I'm gonna explain that. Because if you just kind of stick to the rules, oh, pawns must be on dark squares, you're not gonna win this position. So yeah, material is equal, but pawn structure is better for white at the moment. And you've gotta make sure you keep better pawn structure. So when we go through pawn islands, we can see they have an extra one. They have isolated double pawns here. and an isolated pawn here. And we can see our bishop is looking down at them, so we want to win it. So how are you going to go about winning these pawns then? This isn't really that easy. What you have to do is you have to make sure their pawns stay a weakness. So if they can sort of push these pawns and get them off this diagonal, they'll be fine and it's much harder for white to win them. Yeah, we're gonna break the rules here. Okay, so yeah, two pawn islands. So someone said e4. Okay, we're going to look at e4. And when we looked at the position, we saw that this pawn was a weakness. So why are we going to be trading one of, why are we going to be getting rid of their weakness for them? And then they can just block. So e4 doesn't make a lot of sense because if we see that this d pawn is weak, we don't want to swap it off. Okay, b4. b4 they're gonna hit with b5, and then they're gonna put this pawn on b6 eventually. And when this pawn is on b6, they can defend both these pawns from c6 with their bishop, and they'll be okay. Someone said a4, brilliant. a4 is a brilliant move here. And it's the only move that pretty much wins the game. And what you're doing with a4, is you are stopping them ever pushing b5 themselves. Because if they can push b5, they can get rid of their weakness. My dad is not Brendan, actually. There is another Brendan O'Gorman, but I'm, we're not related. My dad also plays, but not to the same extent that Brendan O'Gorman does. So a4 is the first move. And the problem is after king d4, they can try b5 and here. Yes, I am Irish. Our Gorman is a very Irish name, I think. So again, we and we need to stop the queen coming, sorry, the bishop coming to c6 and defending both the weaknesses. And we need to do that by getting our own pawn on b5. So a4 is the first move. Okay, and when bishop comes back to attack a4, what do we do? We have to defend it. 
So we do that with b3. But now their king comes forward. So their piece is becoming active. So we need to stop their piece becoming active and the move we want to play is b4. So how do we stop, how do we, um, yeah, so you're fixing the pawn weaknesses as Calvin said there. That is exactly what we're doing here. We've noted the pawn weaknesses in our valuation and we're fixing them. If we go b4 right now, they're just going to take our pawn eventually and it's not so good. So we set it up with bishop f3. I just want to ask you guys, remember we said we want to fix this a pawn on a7 and not let them push it. So what happens if they go b5 going b6 next go and getting rid of this light squared weakness? This is an important move, but we play a5. And this is obviously no good for them. They can't let that happen, so they cannot push. And next go you'll push here and get the king in here. So b5 is not possible for them because of this, and they don't have very many moves they can make. If they try something like this, you just go f5, you don't take because then you'll lose your h-pawn. So they're going to move their bishop back. So now they have nothing to do but move their bishop back and forward. So how do we target these two weaknesses? Well, we need to push b4 because at the moment the king is active and we need to stop that. How do we um, set up b4? b4 at the moment actually is possible, but the best way to set it up is just to come here. So after b4, you can immediately play king d4 because it will be, because we need a4 protected. You can do this, but I think b4, b5 straight away works equally well. I think in the game it went bishop d1, but this is also very good, but actually now the king can come back, so it doesn't really work, that's why. We need to keep the king out, so we need bishop, we need to play really slowly, keep holding their weaknesses, bishop back, they again, they can only move their bishop back and forward. Now here, and now you can see, we can play this, and we can play b5 next go, limiting their bishop. So we need to play bishop d1 first, protecting a4. Okay, again, black really doesn't have anything to do, so they play their bishop backwards. And now here. So now, if you see what we've done, this is still really weak on d5, and we're going to play bishop b3 next go to try win it. So they have to come along this diagonal to protect it, and after here they play here. Now again, I want you guys to come up with the winning plan. What do you think is winning here for white? Yeah, so we have bishop b3 in. Bishop e6, f4, e5, brilliant goes to aw. Because if we go e5 straight away, they just swap and we don't win. But we go here first. And now you've got this pin along the light squares. So f5 will win the pawn. And you go on to actually win the game. Yeah, so well done everyone who thought f5, e4. Really well done. This was quite a tricky one. I wanted to show you something much harder than we started with to bring it up a level as we move on. And you did that really well. And so that all came from understanding the weaknesses with these light squared pawns, completely um, cementing them down and then pushing. Yeah, so does everyone understand this? If people have any questions, I'm happy to go over anything. But yeah, I really think it is an amazing endgame. And it all comes from a really good understanding of their weaknesses. And the fact that they could win something like this, just by understanding that these light squares and this pawn structure was bad, was absolutely beautiful. Do you take it with a bishop with a pawn? I think you take, you take with a bishop, I'm fairly sure. The game, I think they took with a bishop. Go to the end there. Oh no, this was just the line we looked at. Was it here? We have so many, have so many lines in this game. But I think you can take with either and you should be winning. But I think they took with the bishop. Okay, and that... So now we're going to move on to one... We've got plenty more to look at. See how much we get through today. We're going to look at this position. So this isn't an end game. We're jumping back to complicated middle games. 
So um, what's going on here? This is a position that definitely needs evaluation because there's so much going on. Yeah. So again, we've got a position where they've castled opposite sides of the board. And as we said, when we looked at that position before, this is gonna be much. Before we look at moves, let's look at what's going on. Yeah, we are breaking Capo Blanca's rules, but in chess, you gotta break rules and actually look at the position. You can't just think in pure principles all the time. You have to evaluate the position and decide what's going on. Yeah, chess computers make the, make the rules now. So, castle opposite sides is gonna be more aggressive, but let's start by counting material again. It's always the place to start. So material here, who's up? Anyone know? Um, so black is up a pawn here, but otherwise material is equal. Okay, so before we start deciding moves, sorry, it's black play off flip the board. We need to come up, we need to evaluate it and decide what's going on. This game is so complicated, there's so many options. There's taking here, there's pushing, there's playing here. But if you just start going, you're just, it's gonna be crazy. So black's up a pawn, there's lots of, there's this potential trade that's happening, so that's something we need to look at. But now let's look at king safety. Whose king is safer? So again, before we look at moves, today it's all about evaluating positions and understanding them. So let's look at the position first. So. Whose king is safer? That's the big question. Oh, this is fast. This is Fasky versus Petrosian, yes, in their one of their world championships matches. Black looks safer right now. You're right. So what you've noticed here is white's king is already open on the G file, but black's king isn't currently open. Oh, my video is buffering. Oh well, I hope it's okay now. Oh yeah. So there's the semi-open G file that black can use. And black's king is currently safe, but look, if white's gonna quickly destroy this defense by pushing these pawns. Yeah, it is a really brilliant game. This. So they're gonna quickly open up the king. So black needs to stop this king being opened up. So we're just gonna look at king safety here and realize that white's king is already open, black's king is about to be opened up. So black's priority needs to be to not get their king um, open. So how are they gonna do this? How is black going to stop the play on the queen side? Because that's where white's play is. We look at white's pieces, they're going to be active looking down at the queen side, while black's pieces are looking at the king. So someone said close the c-file. Exactly. Well done, Ghost JW. That's a really advanced idea to see. So c4, you're closing down their play. All of white's play is on the queen side, and they're only going to make progress if they make your king weak, because white's king is already weak. They need to make blacks too, so c4, and after the bishop moves, you need to make sure they don't open any files. So, someone's saying a5. Well, a5 opens files, and now your king is weak as well, so you need to stop your king being weak. So I think someone suggested it. It's a6. Absolutely brilliant. And the idea is, after a5, B5. The knight does have D5, but you can't really do that straight away because you just take. Sorry, D4. You just take on E5. And this king, white king is so weak that they're going to quickly swing around to G8. And the same thing goes after B5, you shut down the play. So now you can see black's king is safe because they've stopped any pawn breaks. And now it's time to activate their pieces because king safety comes first. Okay, so well done everyone. That's a really tricky position. So congrats on seeing that. Like that's a very advanced idea. Uh, like I was, I had, you know, I was, this is just a position that when I found and I saw this game, I was just like marveling at this beautiful idea of a6. It is Petrosian level of defending because you just create this blockade, you don't allow anything open, and now you can go rook g8 yourself, double on the g file, and maybe play h3. Okay, if that position's clear, we're gonna move on to another one. 
So this one, before you make any plans, you really, really do have to evaluate it fully. And we're black here. And again, it's an end game, but here you might have to consider king's safety a little bit. So what can we say about this king on h5 versus this king on b5? We can see black's a pawn up, but this a pawn is looking bad. So how do we, so how do we evaluate this? Black's a pawn up, but what can we say about white's piece activity? So we're on black side. You can see the eight on the bottom there. I should have said that, yes. Black's king looks very weak, but more than weak, it looks really inactive. Can black make any moves? Black's got a dead king, and it's also got a dead knight. So this is why you can't just look at material in the endgame. You have to go a bit further and actually look at activity. Am I an IM? I'm definitely not an IM. I'm a 1900. I would, yeah, far off from an IM. So yeah, black is completely stuck. You're all right. So even though you're a pawn up, is this position actually good for you? Someone said take the bishop, you can't, unfortunately you're pinned. So black is completely pinned here. So yeah, you're, when you evaluate this, you're from material, but your pieces are terrible. Okay, so someone said check with the rook. Where are we checking with the rook? Rook b2, brilliant. And after they take your pawn, someone said it there. Rook b5. I, well, I think that's what they meant instead of rook b4. So this is the idea. And what you do is you realize you want to draw here because even though you're up material, your pieces are so bad. If they move, take the rook. And now you've sorted out your position. You don't even have to take the rook. You can keep checking if you're happy to do that as well. And if they take, what can we say this is? Stalemate. Brilliant. So if you take a deeper look at this position, you see you have no where to go and you just play the stalemate. Okay. I'm just going to go through that one more time because knowing you want to draw here is not that easy. And also just we need to check that this doesn't work because taking here and also taking here you can move the knight so don't fall into this trap you want to win well we all want to win but is this winning you're going to lose your pawn because their pieces are so more active you can't do anything so you really are happy for the draw yeah so you're happy for the draw because even though you're up a pawn which you're actually no longer when you evaluate the position you realize all their pieces are active and your piece are inactive, so they're actually better. Very sneaky, yeah. Okay, and before, I think we're gonna have, we'll go for, we'll go for this position now. So this is white to play, and we looked at some end games, some middle games, but now I want to evaluate openings. So does everyone know what you want to do in the opening? There are three things you want to do. You want to castle, develop your pieces, and get the center. Um, in this position, white's ready to castle. They've got the center, and they've developed their pieces, so they're doing well. But what can we say about black's position? Um, so in terms of their king, is it safe? So this king is stuck in the center and it's going to take two moves for it to castle, so currently it's not very safe. Someone says 95. Again, we're not going to look at moves straight away, but look at the position first to get an understanding of it. So this king is not very safe because it's stuck in the center. And what about their pieces? So what can we say about this bishop on c8? Is this an active piece sitting here? What is my favorite opening? That is a very big question. 
probably the Italian because I just am a simple player who doesn't know many openings. Um, yeah, this bishop isn't developed, this knight isn't developed, and even though this knight is developed, it's it's doing an okay job, maybe because you're going to play c5 or e5 at some stage, but their pieces aren't well developed. They haven't got the center. They haven't really got the center. You know, they're attacking it from the outside, but they don't have control over it. So you can actually see they haven't done anything they want to do in the opening, so their position isn't great. I'm reading off both chats, Twitch and YouTube. I'm trying to keep up with them all, but there's a lot of messages coming in and I think there might be a little delay. So people are saying knight g5 and sack the bishop. So knight g5 is quite a slow move because they can just play e6. And if you're trying to fry deliver them, they are well developed enough. So yeah, when the king is still in the center and their pieces aren't developed, you can go for sacrifices, but you need to check them. So some people were saying bishop takes f7 first. Okay, after king takes, what is our follow-up? Knight g5, someone was saying. Okay. And so now, let's play king f6, and when we take a look at this position again, the king is now really unsafe, so queen f3 is mate. And after check, if the king comes here, what is our final move that wins? Yeah, so as White Bloom said, if they can survive two more moves, they should be fine. You're right, the hypermodern is fine, but they didn't play it accurately. And they didn't, they, they let themselves fall into this. So here we have a check. E6 is a hole and you win the queen. And if they come back here, we now just trap the queen instead. Yeah, so a royal four. Absolutely brilliant. They created this hole on e6 and we took advantage of it. So again, that came from having an understanding of the position that they hadn't developed fast enough, they hadn't castled, and their pieces weren't developed. And we can see that like, if they had, if, if it was one more move in, and they had developed more pieces, this definitely wouldn't work. Because now king can just come back here not there. Come back here. I think this is a more complicated version actually because maybe it still does work but not to the same extent. Whether black can trap that piece at the end I don't think we have time to look into but yes. So evaluate evaluate. Um, I think we have time for one more but I do want to kind of give some important closing remarks which I might actually um we'll look at this one now instead so again evaluating is really important for deciding if you want to play on for the win or if you want to draw and that is a really big thing people use evaluation for and what we're going to look at here is material to start with black's piece up but what is white threatening If white just makes a move here, what will they do? They will just take here. So, oh, have I made this black's move? Well, we made, I set this up wrong. We made it black's move, did we? Um, I'll just change that. It's black's move now. Perfect. Okay, yeah. So checkmate is coming here. So you have to block. You have to stop this. So what moves as what black stop this? The move is here that stops it. Only it's one of the only moves that stops it. And so now as white, they have to evaluate. They have to evaluate this ending. Takes, takes, and takes. So do you think this end game is better for white or black? And it's important to evaluate this correctly to see whether you should go into it or not. After taking here, you're going to count material, first thing to do an evaluation, and check that black is two pawns up, and white does not have the activity to make up for it, so this is not a good ending to go into. So for that reason, white didn't take in the game, and they blocked, 
still threatening mate because they didn't want to go into the endgame. Now queen c6. So why queen c6 wasn't placed right away is they just wanted to take this pawn first. And so now queen c6. So now if rook takes, queen takes, knight takes, they've got an extra pawn in the endgame. And again, once you evaluate, you realize black is a pawn up. And this endgame is going to suit them. So white evaluates this and realizes they can't go for this line. So they have to again block. They're threatening the mate. There's no other way to stop it. This just loses a piece and also mate comes anyway. There's no way to run. So black has to keep playing this. And as white knows, they're going to lose if they don't keep blocking. It ends in a draw. And that comes from white's evaluation that if they go for anything else, they're going to lose. So they better take a draw. And black knowing if they go for anything, they lose too. Too fast? Okay, I'll slow this down. Queen here is played because they can't take on h7 because it's a pin to the king. So white wants to keep threatening this because if they move backwards, well, they can't move backwards, but if they allow a queen trade, they're going to be a piece down. And even if they snatch this piece, which can't be taken back because mate, even if they snatch the piece, they're going to be in a pawn down endgame and it's not what they want. So they don't go for this. Instead, they realize they have to keep threatening mate, but they can't. And the only way to do that is to block the pen. And black realizes they have to defend this mate. Only way to do this is here. White again evaluates the endgame, realizes it's not right. So blocks and it just is a draw because either player evaluates deviating from the line and realizes they lose. Okay, so now to finish off, yeah, in some positions you do need to calculate. So calculation and evaluation go hand in hand. The final thing I want to talk about is you can't just, you can't just evaluate in every single position because you'll run out of time and you'll get too tired. So some tips I just want to give you at the end here is only eva evaluate when you come at the opening and you're out of theory. As we said, evaluate complicated and try to evaluate that. And the easiest way to evaluate is just to look at the king, see everything about it, see all the squares about it, see any weaknesses. And then after that, um, take a look at piece activity, then pawn structure, and hopefully you should get everything in there. So that's all I have for today. I hope, I hope it made some sense and you have a better idea on evaluating and how to actually apply it to your games. And thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for watching. Okay.